right, everybody, welcome. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Um, we are going to hear from Mike Freezy, who's the manager of pharmacy clinical services at Sharp Healthcare, and he's going to talk to us about the ROI of clinical surveillance at Sharp. Thanks so much, Mike. Great, thank you. So I'm going to be talking about the ROI, but more specifically, how Vigilance fits into the culture of Sharp Healthcare. A little background on Sharp. Uh, Sharp is the market share leader in San Diego. Uh, it has increased its market share. Uh, it's the only health system to increase its market share uh, for 18 consecutive years. And it has seven hospitals, three SNFs, uh, three affiliated medical groups, and a small health insurance plan. Uh, some background is that technology is something where the ROI can sometimes be elusive and you can measure it in many ways as to how you get an ROI from a technology. But for Sharp Healthcare, when we're looking at how uh, we measure impact or, or an ROI, uh, we drill down to things that may be common to you, which would be a balanced scorecard approach. Uh, at Sharp we call it the pillars of excellence. And we also talk about the Sharp experience or our larger culture that was established years ago. Um, in our first year of implementation, we definitely have had success with this as a technology accelerator as it relates to the Sharp experience and also those pillars that I mentioned. So the background on the culture at Sharp Health started around 2001, where the leadership team looked at you know, how can we transform the culture at Sharp Health. Uh, they created a care philosophy wanting Sharp to be the best place to work, the best place to practice medicine, and the best place to receive care in the universe. I didn't put that in the slide, but they really had a lofty goal at the time to you know, make it a great place to work and receive care. And they established this calling it the Sharp Experience with the Pillars of Excellence. And then in subsequent years, they layered on Lean Six Sigma, and then more recently, high reliability organization uh, training, which all employees must undergo. They also were inspired at the time by a book that many of you may have heard of, which is Good to Great. Uh, a book that looked at what differentiated companies at the time that were just good versus those that were great. And the model had several uh, factors in it, but you can see that one of them is a technology accelerator. And that's really where Vigilance fits in and some of the other technologies that Sharp Healthcare has adopted. So I'm going to speak about how Vigilance has been a technology accelerator um, and as that relates to the Sharp experience. Our pre-Vigilance workflow was much like probably many of your health systems, where you had daily or printed reports, and then you used your existing EHR to leverage what was there. Um, at Sharp, we had a Cerner task list, which not all Cerner customers use for pharmacy, often it's used just for nurses. Uh, we also used the patient access list and end pages. Um, what resulted from that is our pharmacist would then interpret those uh, results and search for interventions. Um, and then on morning rounds, make interventions, or throughout the day, make interventions. This was often just a single episode where you look at it once and then you move on um, in your workflow. The Cerner task list uh, was one of the main areas where they worked from. At Sharp, we had 61 customized pharmacy tasks, and they would fire uh, from either a power plan or a rule. And sometimes the pharmacists had the responsibility to enter a follow-up task uh, so that then it would populate the next day. Uh, things that would come across included consults, one-time tasks such as reminding them to discontinue uh, heparin and anticoagulants uh, when the heparin drip uh, power plan was implemented, uh, and then daily reminders to look at things such as converting oral medications uh, when the patient was on tube feeds to the more appropriate route, or to check dialysis patients to retime antibiotics. Uh, but these rules would just fire every day regardless of whether the patient um, had oral medications on the profile or regardless of whether they had any antibiotics while on dialysis. The patient access list uh, is something where you are able to see all the patients in the hospital with their admission and then just pull in uh, a handful of things that may be of interest to you. Uh, in pharmacy, we pulled in the column for creatinine clearance, and then the pharmacist's workflow was to manually go into those patients and do profile review to see which medications needed to be adjusted. The practice transformation that happened uh, has, has been going ongoing for the last nine months. So we've only been live with Vigilance for nine months. Our initial reason to bring in Vigilance was ASP. So our initial go live then in March and April was to roll out the rule set for ASP to all six databases, although it includes seven hospitals. Uh, and then after that, move it on to the staff level with renal and IVDPO rules. The last few months though, we've been shifting our focus over to workflow changes and innovation. Um, the stuff that excites me. 
So our post Vigilance workflow now has shifted to using this deep API data feed uh, to pull in uh, a lot of data from Cerner. Um, I had this product in a previous health system where we had just HL7 feeds, and the difference in data that flows across is night and day. Um, we then move on to real-time vigilance surveillance and reduced time for interpretation and searching, you know, hunting and pecking for information and interventions, and then enhanced coverage, where you're not just looking at, you know, I'm doing everything at 9 o'clock until noon, then I take lunch, and then I enter orders or verify orders. Uh, you now have activations coming across uh, at all times of the day and providing a higher level of care for your patients. So measures of success. As I mentioned, we have a balanced scorecard approach, and we call them pillars of excellence. And I've seen that Vigilance uh, has impacted the pillars of quality, safety, people, and finance. And I should say that when we uh, do have that large API data feed, that we end up with a large rule set, too, um, which uh, is, in my mind, uh, exciting because we did this much work in only nine months. As I said, our initial goal was to improve our approach to ASP. And in terms of interventions, uh, we found that on the Cerner side, where we were still documenting some interventions, that we saw a 4% increase um, in just a short time from the baseline to the follow-up period. We also had some interventions that were being documented in Vigilance that may not have been documented in Cerner. And you can see that after the go-live, we plateaued around over 400 interventions in a month. But the real impact beyond ASP has been the rest of our pharmacy staff and um, non-ASP interventions. You can see that we have four, over 4,000 interventions and consults that have now come across. And that's with only three out of our six databases doing that innovative work. So I do expect that as we continue that work into the month of December and January and February, that we're going to see a whole new plateau of this. Also, we've had the gift of time. So the hunting and pecking has reduced by 30 to 50% to find those interventions. And then some of our sites that really looked at their workflow a lot more have reduced their daily and weekly paper and electronic reports or the sources of information by 50%. So more specifically, uh, one of the pre-specified um, measures that we had for successful go-live uh, for ASP was how many hours did we spend per week just hunting and pecking for information. And this was self-reported, uh, but still I think fairly reliable because we have a handful of very good ASP pharmacists that were legitimately wanting to report how this was working. At baseline, we spent 111 hours to find those patients. And after implementation, we're down to 77 hours, which is almost one full FTE. So that could be attached to a dollar amount if you want, but you know we're not gonna go fire pharmacists. So it's just that you may not have to request another one next year. So if you have to talk to your CFO or whoever you report to, uh, you know, this is really an ROI if you are looking for one that may be a harder outcome than you might get trying to attach a dollar amount to some of the interventions. Oh, actually, I'm going to go back. Uh, and although we had a 30% reduction overall, some of the sites had a 50% reduction. So this is the average for all sites combined. Also being a Six Sigma organization, two of our sites did a waste walk. They looked at where is everything coming in at me? Where are my eyeballs going? Printed things, electronic things. Uh, automatic reports that come across. And what they found was that pre-vigilance, they had 20 different sources of things coming at them. When they tried to write rules to uh, have vigilance replace that, they got that down to 10. And I think this is just a starting point, because we still need to do this work at four more hospitals and also say, well, what can we do with those leftover 10? But sometimes you have to be careful to slow things down a little bit. Um, I was cautioned not to go too fast sometimes, because you don't want to take away something that someone takes pride in. So we have some amazing Excel spreadsheets that have blown me away to the Excel skills that our pharmacists have to monitor their patients for certain special things, such as fentanyl patches and various other things. So we'll eventually get to probably even lower than this, but this is a, a, a drop in half of where they're getting their, their information. Now speaking about the Sharp Experience, uh, there are several areas where we've seen the Sharp Experience improve as it relates to pharmacy. So on the evening coverage, we found things that would not have been found at that time because the pharmacist on the evening shift may be focusing more on order verification and dispensing. But if you keep some eyeballs on the vigilance queue, you'll start to find some things that would really improve the care of your patients. So here's an example. At 9.30 p.m., we had an immunocompromised patient where the results came back with yeast in the blood. 
something you don't want to wait until the next day to begin treating because there's over a 30% mortality there. And within two hours of this firing, we had the patient on appropriate antifungal therapy. We also had a patient in our women's um, hospital who had an abscess where the cultures came back and we didn't have adequate coverage. Uh, this was actually on our go live day and we had a pharmacist who really wasn't buying into this change in their practice. After this, they were like, okay, there's something here, there's something to this software, because when you're not buying into something, but then you see it impact the patient, that's why we're in healthcare. We also saw interventions related to the location of care. So we do actually have ASP at our mental health hospital. The biggest interventions they have is a patient goes into the ED next door in the larger acute care hospital, they get stabilized in some way, but maybe they need to treat infection or they came in having been on an antibiotic, and then they come across the, uh, the street to our, our mental health hospital and they're admitted for a long-term stay there. And they look at the, that transition of care in. Um, what they don't actively do much is culture review when the patient's already in the mental health hospital. And in this case, we found a wound culture that was positive for MRSA and they were able to escalate the therapy. Uh, they may have eventually found it, the physician would probably would have been called or, or something like that would have happened, but you know, this is just one way to, to speed up that care and enhance the sharp experience for your patients. We also saw some examples with transitions of care where the physician had already decided, this patient's going home today, here's the discharge plan, here's the scripts, we're done. And then an activation came across for a pharmacist who was still monitoring the patient, because there may be a few hours before the patient goes home. And we had an example where a second organism grew out and the patient needed an additional antibiotic. Uh, we had a non-ASP example where the patient needed renal dosing of a DOAC um, and they could have gone home on the wrong dose of an anticoagulant. In both cases, the pharmacist intervened to correct both of those issues. So pre vigilance it really takes one patient, one story. And that makes the Sharp Experience or in your hospital what you consider to be the experience of your hospital. So around the time we were going live, although I don't know that this patient would have been impacted, um, Sharp released a, uh, a news release that they had discharged the smallest baby ever in the world. And while pharmacy probably had some role during the NICU stay, um, Vigilance wasn't present for that. But now post-Vigilance, one patient, one story still happens, but now the technology is leveraged. It's a technology accelerator so that pharmacy is now providing more Sharp experience stories for their patients, as I've already gone through. So that is everything I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you.